All right. Uh, first things first, uh, I see that uh, there's about 119 of you on, but only about 20 have your cameras on. So I'd like everybody to turn on their cameras so we can see everybody in the see everybody in this nice large gallery view. Very fun. OK. Very good. Very fun. I'll ask Craig to take some nice screenshots as everybody's popping up because that's super fun and doesn't get into the recording. Very fun. Got the whole seven by seven by seven. We've maximized it. That's awesome. Uh, so um, I will just state since we're being recorded for the record that normally our Tuesday calls, uh, Craig's been doing such a wonderful job with all of these calls that we've ended up with usually between like 160 and 200 people coming on our regular meeting and this agenda item when we said to have fun there's only 120 of you so i'll just go on record in saying that i don't know what the heck's wrong with the other 60 people that we actually have an hour of fun and be like no thanks i'd i'd prefer to do boring stuff um, but i appreciate that all of you are here to have fun with us um, but just to verify that you really are here to have fun, I need to see those you got your cameras on. Show me that you're ready to have fun. All right, that's the lamest collection of ways to show that you're going to have fun ever. Like, yay. I would like you to take off your mute button and tell me that you're ready to have fun. Ready to have fun. Ready, ready to have fun. Let's go. I just heard someone say, I'm ready to have fun, uh, which is, that's kind of like when I'm uh, dealing, dealing with Catherine and telling her that she's going to have a good time with me. I'll have a good time with you. Um, okay, well, let's get started. Um, I've, I've created three fun games for you. Um, these are all going to be participatory challenges for you, so I want you all to be paying attention and fully engaged. Um, you're going to have, we're going to have three different games that we're going to play. The first one is going to require that you use the little chat window in um, in the Teams environment. You should have seen Craig post about it, but uh, just as a, a practice, you can actually, for those of you who do have access to the chat, you should be able to post and you can declare um, uh, that I want to have fun. And you can post your post yourself to declare to everybody that you're ready to have fun. The first game that we're going to play is going to be called Three Degrees of Odyssey.org. I'm going to show you something that is an image or some representation. I can promise you that you can get to it in three clicks or less from the Odyssey.org website. Your task is find it somewhere on the Odyssey website, take a screenshot of it on your screen, and post it in the chat, okay? So what, what all of you are participating, what I want you to do is open up a browser, go to odyssey.org, and you're at the right starting point. I promise you for these collection of exercises, anything I'm gonna show you, you can get to in three clicks or less. Find the page, get me the URL, uh, post it in the chat, and we'll be ready to roll. Is the game clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do a practice run just so that it warm you guys up and so that you're ready for it. Here's a practice example. If I showed you this, this image, where would you go to find it on the Odyssey website? Well, in fact, this is on the home page. This orange X is actually the inner part of our Odyssey logo which for those of you who are new to the community might not know the backstory of our logo. But if you look at our logo, this is not only a bow and arrow signifying uh, uh, some of the, the, the journey that Odysseus went through, but it's also a receiver operating characteristic curve to show an arrow pointing up because we want to maximize our predictive accuracy. Uh, and so this was our first community activity that we did at this community was to come up with this silly logo that is now still with us nine days later. So your task for this project would have been find the website, odyssey.org, take a screenshot of where you found the image and paste it into the chat. 
All right. So Mark would have been the first one to post odyssey.org in the chat. So he would have won a gold star. And Patrick gold stars are very hard to come by. So they're cherished throughout the world. All right. Good job, Mark. Well done. Oh, and Alicia's posting the, the screenshot. Uh, so you, now you're all ready. OK, so here we go. Your first challenge. Let's see who could be the first one to win a, a, a famous Patrick Gold star with the following screenshot. Somebody is really excited about this one. They know. I would hope everybody knows. And they're just trying to find it. Oh, it. let's see who, who popped up first. Hey, Mitch. Yeah. Mitch. All right, Craig, you're going to be my scorekeeper while I go I... through this. Uh, oh, now I have it as Mark. Oh, they're going out of order. I thought I saw Karen post, and then I saw, and then I saw Mitch, and then I saw Mark. So Greg, Greg got the screenshot. Got the That's a very nice touch. Just has that. All right. All right. The first so one I saw of pop you... up was Mitch, but now it's Mitch, Mitch or Mark. So. Guess what? Mitch, Mark, you both get a gold star. Congratulations. Well done. So for those of you who don't see it, this is to improve health. <clears throat> of course, you all know that is our mission in Odyssey is to prove health by empowering a community to collaboratively generate the evidence that promotes better health decisions and better care. This is on our page, Mission, Visions, Vision, and Values. And you all should be able to get to that. That's one click from our website to be able to find the fact that we're all here to improve health and have a little fun while we're doing it. All right, challenge number two. All right, Craig, I'm gonna... Oh, Greg, you get a silver star. I'm passing out stars like, like they're hot potatoes here. All right, so anybody, anybody know where weird, weird red blobs? Oh, FISA! Uh, Oh, and Kristen's FISA. Wow. Shiny gold star for FISA. Kristen, well done. Greg, well done. Sheer, well done. Several people know that this is a very small screenshot into our Odyssey collaborator page. Okay. We've got, uh, uh, actually, I, I looked at it uh, yesterday in preparation for George's session, the National Academy of Science. We actually currently have uh, over 2,100 collaborators in the community scattered all around the world. Uh, I happen to just put a little little box around all of those little icons that are, are um, on one place, but you can see we've got active collaboration and participation on this call in the U.S., in Europe, in Asia-Pacific regions. Um, encourage you all to continue to engage and be part of the collaboration there. Oh, Peter, what's going on? It doesn't work in Europe. No, not only Peter, all of us have the same problem. After FISA took the uh, screenshot, it went wrong. It's uh, <laughs> API overload, probably. Yeah. That's Some awesome. People hitting. We're breaking the website. I love it. I love <laughs> that we're breaking the website. I think she just stole the image. That's what she did. <laughs> <laughs> we broke Google. I love it. Uh, that is the power of a community right there. All right. Well, the next one won't require a Google API, but I want you to find the following. Uh. Oh, oh. Mark always criticizes that we don't give enough love to Cyclops. So it's explicitly there. Love to Cyclops. Dropped on you. Case, uh, Case has a suggestion. Uh, Maxim, he's, he's got it. But where is this specific image? Uh, Kristen's got a screenshot. So it's on software tools, yes, software tools. Actually, you know what's funny? I actually didn't even get it from the link that everybody uh, is posting, but of course it is, of course, there also. So, I actually kept uh, to the screenshot. Very good. So everybody's oh. posting that they found it. Oh, and Maxim, you actually went all the way to odyssey.github.io slash Hades slash packages. That is indeed where I went as well. If you go to that the, the very nice GitHub repo that provides all the documentation of our Hades packages, you'll see all of the packages of open source software that are available in the community. That includes our various tools for population level effect estimation, including comparative cohort and self-controlled designs, our package for evidence synthesis, 
um, the very robust work we've done in patient level prediction. We've got tools for evidence quality, including empirical calibration and methods evaluation and cohort diagnostics. A shout out to Gautam being released as a new version and a major upgrade there. Um, but one of the core supporting packages under all of our large scale analysis is Cyclops, um, led by Mark Suchard. Um, this is the way that we can actually analyze millions of records and hundreds of thousands of covariates and actually fit models when anybody else in the world says, oh, that fails to converge or like, we can't actually process data that big. Um, the, the scientific innovation and technical solution that Mark uh, has led is really underneath the hood of all of our causal inference and prediction work. So um, if, you, if you didn't know, now you know. Go check out the Hades packages. Go read the documentation. And thanks to Mark for, for Cyclops and all of the work he's doing in the community. So gold stars for Maxim and keys and keys. Well done, guys. I appreciate that the hive was representing them when it comes to open source software development. All right, next one. Oh, oh, I love Karen's excitement. <laughs> this is this brings Karen excitement. <laughs> when you love yourself some. Some issues. I actually think I saw at one point, I saw Michael Kahn on the phone. So if he doesn't get this, I'm going to retract two stars from Michael Kahn. <laughs> Come on, Karen, I've, you can do it. <laughs> I have Kristen and Greg Kristen. were the first two I saw. Oh, you bet I know TQD. I use this every day. Uh. That's right. This is a screenshot from inside of the data quality dashboard. If you were to go to data.osc.org slash data quality dashboard, you'll see a nice demonstration of the data quality dashboard. Uh, this is from our publicly available Cynthia data. Good job, Karen. You still get a gold star from me. And your excitement about this is, is palpable, so I appreciate that. Uh, for those of you, see, now I can actually see Michael. Um, so Michael will appreciate that I'll make him uh, blush because everybody in our community talks about the Khan framework as if it was like handed down from the Lord and we must all follow the Khan framework. And I have to like whip it out of Claire Blackheader to not talk about the Khan framework like he's some mythical being. I was like, he's just a cool dude uh, in our community. But indeed, the Khan framework is uh, underlying and underpinning our data quality dashboard tool, laying out plausibility, conformance, completeness, and the disciplines of verification and validation is how we've been able to enumerate a very large collection of data quality assessment tools that we've now standardized into this one package data quality dashboard, which is underlying a lot of the work that's going on around the community, including in Eden with all the data partners that you heard Peter talking about before. So. Thank you to Michael. Thank you to Claire for the development of AQD. Thank you to Karen for being so excited about finding data quality problems. And gold stars for Kristen and others who identified this on the website. All right, one more, I think. It's from Atlas? <laughs> yes, from Atlas. Can it's you get a screen screenshot of it, though? Yeah, it's when you're waiting while it's loading <laughs> to show <laughs> you this right. symbol. That's right. If you click on Atlas, and I, oh, let's see, Sherry got Sherry, it. Melanie yeah. got it. Sherry well done. Melanie if you go to Atlas, that, oh, yeah, and George got it. Very good. Indeed, uh, when you get, uh, if you go to any Atlas instance and it's initially loading, or if you click on any of the pages and it's taking a second, you'll get to see these concentric circles running around in circles. Shout out to Frank DeFalco, who developed this crazy moving uh, image that is embedded within the Atlas tool. I can say that, uh, you know, it's just a, sometimes it lulls me to sleep when the, the tool is too slow and I'm just watching this thing circle over and over again. Um, but I think it's actually a very cool logo that fits very nicely with the Atlas theme. And I encourage you all, you should, you should know about that image right away because you should be doing research faster than the speed that the tool can keep up with you. And if you are, you will indeed see these logos. All right. Greg, that was the last one, right? Yes. All right. Congratulations, all. You have played game number one, three degrees of odyssey.org. You, uh, several gold stars have gone out. Nobody was harmed in the making of this game. So well done, you've, you've succeeded. 
So now I'm going to give you a new challenge, a new pro, a new game that we're going to play uh, to do this. Uh, let's see. It's on my. Oh no! I have one more. I have one more. Oh, that's right. One more. Come on, Craig. Because <laughs> the best one is this one. This weird little screenshot. Where do you find that? Grab right. another gold or silver star if he wants it. Kristen. Yay. <laughs> Mark. Maxim, yes. Indeed, three clicks or less. If you go from the odyssey.org website, you can buy a copy of the Book of Odyssey. Now, of course, it's free, and you can just download the electronic version, and that's totally cool, too. But I think it's fun that you can buy, uh, buy the book at Amazon.com. I think it's fun that we have a five-star rating I think it's a little sad that only seven of you all have actually rated it on Amazon. Um, I also find it very curious that somebody is selling a used copy of their book of odyssey.org for $7.98 for those who apparently $10.82, which is the cost of production, is apparently too rich for your blood. If you want to save two bucks, apparently someone is selling a used copy. Um, or if you want... You can come to my house because I've always got copies of books of Odyssey laying around, always available, just in case you ever need one. You can also get your copy in Korean or Chinese uh, and check it, check it out. All right. I want to shout out to Martine uh, uh, for leading us and David Madigan for leading us through getting to the book of Odyssey, to Kristen and to the broader team that actually got us to this version uh, I'm a little bit sad that we only ranked 361,791 in books, all books in the world that were only in the top 361,000. But I tell you what, that book that's 361,789, it better watch out because we're coming for it. Oh. All right. <laughs> all right. So now we are going to play a new game. I like to call it Truths and a Lie, Odyssey Edition. For this game... I'm going to show you nine words or phrases. Eight of them are legitimate concepts in the Odyssey vocabulary. One of them is a lie. Your task is going to be to pick the lie, the word or phrase that is not actually a concept. To do this, you can go to pollev.com slash Patrick Ryan 800. We're all just going to vote together to see how you all do, and we'll see whether or not you, uh, you crowdsource your thinking about this. Okay, so I'll give you all a second. Craig's posted in the chat. Go to pollev.com slash Patrick Ryan 800. I'm going to flip over here. Your first, full screen, your first question is about dog bites. Truth and a lie. Are there legitimate clinical concepts for dog bite of hip, dog bite of buttock, dog bite of genitalia? Dog bite of nose, dog bite of mouth, dog bite of leg, dog bite of forearm, dog bite of toe, dog bite of great toe. To be clear, all they're looking for the one that's not there. Yes, we want you to pick the lie. So eight of these are totally legitimate concepts in the vocabulary, and one of them is a lie. See how you guys can do. Give you all a second to vote. This is probably going to naturally separate by your last recent experience with a dog, your fear of dogs. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think that the uh, Odyssey vocabulary, that eight of these are legitimate ways you can be maimed by a dog. And it's also kind of silly to think that one of these I had to make up. All right. We're getting some good votes here. Looks like lots of people have, don't believe that dogs bite butts. Uh and uh, but, the, but it looks like the winner here is dog bite of the great toe. Dog bite of the great toe. I'm going to give it uh, 15 more seconds. Get everybody's votes in. It feels like it's kind of stabilizing. 
Indeed, uh, Jake posted in the chat that if you actually wanted to understand this, you can use athena.odyssey.org as a tool that will actually allow you to search the vocabulary in case you wanted to do this as an empirical investigation. But I think it's actually fun to just read these things and, and guess yourself. And I will stop here to tell you that almost all of you, 94% of you, were wrong. Because it turns out that what is the truth? You can use the Odyssey vocabulary for dog bite of hip, dog bite of buttock, Dog bite of genitalia, dog bite of nose, dog bite of mouth, dog bite of forearm, dog bite of toe, dog bite of great toe. You cannot use the Odyssey vocabulary for dog bite of leg. Dog bite of leg was the answer we were looking for there. To prove it, here is a query you can run at the Odyssey vocabulary. Select star from concept where concept aim in. All of those strings that I just gave you. And if you were to query that, you'd see that not only are they concepts, they are standard concepts in the SNOMED vocabulary for everything except for dog bite of leg. All right. Now that you've failed the community and your lack of knowledge of vocabulary, I'll give you another shot. Um, so 94% of you disappointed me greatly. Let's see what I have to do here to move on to the next one. So the next question. Whoops. I just skip one. I just skip one. That was dog bites. Oh, there we go. Pizza ingredients. Pizza ingredients is the question. Now, what I want you to know is these are legitimate concepts in the vocabulary. Do we have pizza dough, tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, pepperoni, mushrooms, bell peppers, olives, pineapple, or anchovy? Which one of these is a lie? Which one of these concepts does not belong to the Odyssey vocabulary? <laughs> Kristen, yes. <laughs> All right, we got some pizza dough, we got some tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, pepperoni, mushroom, bell pepper, olives, pineapple. Many would prefer to hold the anchovy. Your question, which one of these is not in the vocabulary? I appreciate that Michael Cook wants to use these concepts in his work. There seems to be irony on multiple fronts there. And yes, Melanie, if you feel so inclined to, to, to answer this by searching the vocab, you can if you want. I'll give you all 10 seconds, though. Indeed, it looks like the majority of you think pizza dough is the one pizza ingredient that you can't make. How in the world do you make a pizza without pizza dough? Looks like 58% and everything else. You got some... Well, as your Odyssey dad, I will say that indeed I am proud of you because the majority of you knew that pizza dough is the lie. Tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, pepperoni, mushroom, bell pepper, olives, pineapple, anchovy, all legitimate concepts in the vocabulary. If you want to study pizzas, there is a concept for pizza and there's a concept for pizza base, but there is not a concept for pizza dough. There's also there gluten free oops, pizza just, base as well for the gluten free. There's also got the gluten free people too. So there's your query to verify that indeed the only one missing there is pizza dough. All right. So going back here, next question. I call this pure imagination. Which one of these, which, which one of these concepts is a lie? Has an imaginary friend, unidentified flying object, monster, clown, unicorn, talking rock, black magic, Bugs Bunny, Santa Claus. Eight of these are legitimate concepts in the Odyssey vocabulary. One of them is a lie. Tell me the lie. All right. Initial people are thinking Bugs Bunny. It's not our, not our, uh, our item here. The talking rock not far behind black magic few few fans of the monster oh, unicorns unicorns getting knocked up not there goes talking rock some people don't believe in santa claus most people feeling good about uh, imaginary friends and an unidentified flying object give you 10 more seconds 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 two, one, and I'm now going to tell you that 81% of you disappointed me and my daughter's heart is broken because unicorn is not in the Odyssey vocabulary. 
There are no unicorns in the Odyssey vocabulary, but all of these other things are there. Christian Reich, we need to solve this problem right now. I need an Easter egg concept ID for unicorn because my daughter needs a unicorn in her life uh, as our house is filled with them. We need a GitHub issue, Patrick. All right, I will. Someone post. You get, you get five gold stars if you post a GitHub issue on the vocab right now asking for a unicorn. But what parent concept do you want? I got to relate it to yeah, something. It's it's an op extension, and then and here we go. Very good. Thank you, Dima. Thank you for getting that to sort it out for me. <laughs> Our next truth and a lie. Let's talk about Tom, Dick, or Harry. Which, which, which one of these is a lie and which eight are true? I want you to tell me the lie. Peeping Tom, Tom boyishness in a girl, Tom Bean, spotted dick, slippery dick, dick test, hairy ear, Prince Harry, Harry's antiperspirant fig. Which one of these is a lie and which one of these, which, which one, I want you to vote for which one of these is a lie? Which of these concepts is not in the Odyssey vocabulary? Well, initial people think that Prince Harry is not good enough for the royal family and he's not good enough for our vocab. Some people are wondering why one would spread fig under their arms. A couple of people question what's a dick test. Seems odd that in today's society we'd be talking about tomboyishness in a girl. Someone's not so sure about a uh, hairy ear. Give you five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. Again, as your Odyssey father, I'm quite proud of at least 53% of you. The 47% I'll be disappointed. But indeed, Prince Harry is not in our Odyssey vocabulary. These other eight are all legitimate concepts. All right, I think we got one more. It's all about fun and games. The Odyssey vocabulary contains a, a wide array of social contexts and ways that we can play, including baseball, cricket, American football, soccer, rugby, volleyball, shooting pool or billiards, chess, role playing. Eight of these are legitimate concepts in the Odyssey vocabulary. One is not, choose the lie. And, and while you're answering that, uh, Dima's dropped some clinical knowledge for those of you who don't know. Indeed, a dick test is a very legitimate lab test uh, to determine whether, uh, determine your status of scarlet fever. Spotted dick is actually a British bread pudding like thing. And slippery dick is actually a weird, shiny, small fish somewhere in, uh, I think is off the Pacific. Um, so, um, so what was the antiperspirant was, fig? Yeah, so ha ha Harry's Harry's is an entire branded line of antiperspirants, and they have various rustic flavors, including fig. Fig is one of the flavors of an antiperspirant that Harry's makes. I do not support or endorse it. I just found it in the vocabulary. And you can even find its structured product label and pull it up if you're so inclined. I don't know why you would be. All right, five more seconds uh, for fun and games. Uh, we've got 46% uh, of you think role playing is not a thing. 30% say chess. 10% think American football, being very clear about the literal string there, whereas other would, might want to talk, call it soccer. Well, 71% of you have disappointed me again. The lie is chess. Chess is not in the Odyssey vocabulary. All of these other games are legitimately in there, including role playing and all of these other sports. But chess, chess is missing. So for those who think to be strategic thinkers, think strategically about how you can improve our vocabulary. Uh, and Dean is saying you can't get trauma in chess, but I don't know if you've ever been stabbed with a bishop, you know that that can hurt like hell. All right. I think... Mm, Craig, I think that's that was game two, right? That was it, yep. All right. 
for anybody who wants to see the slides, I've got real code that actually shows you that I didn't make all of this crap up. Our vocabulary is a pretty amazing thing. But the last game that we're going to play in the highlight of tonight from my perspective is name that too. Uh, for those of you who know the game show, this is nothing like that at all. This is a totally crazy, perverted Odyssey style thing. But the game's going to work as follows. I'm going to show you a valid SQL statement. Code you could run against your OMOP common data model. But it's not just code. It's a clue to tell you about a famous musical song. I would encourage you to maybe possibly have these two helpful resources available, the OMOP common data model documentation and the Odyssey vocabulary search at athena.odyssey.org. They might be helpful. Your task is that when you see this SQL statement, I want you to decipher the clue to reveal a famous musical song. I want you to type the title and the singer of the song and post it in the channel. First person who posts it on our chat wins an illustrious gold star. To get to just to give you a sense of how this is going to work, I'll show you a first practice example. If I showed you this query, select star from measurement, where measurement concept ID equals 3029561, and unit concept ID is 37116340, and value as number equals one, you'd have to decipher this clue. Now, hopefully several of you are using Athena right now to look up these concepts, but just since it's a practice, I'll give you a hint. Hint number one, the concept 3029561, this is the standard concept for sugar. Hint number two, 37116340, that's the unit of spoonful. Mark has guessed pour some sugar on me, that would be a, a good guess, but no, in this practice example, the answer would be a spoonful of sugar by Julie Andrews in the movie Mary Poppins. Uh, fun little fact, this was actually a song inspired by the polio vaccine and has come back to relevance. Uh, I read an article about C on CNN talking about this. So you get the gist of the game. You're going to get a query. You're going to have to decipher the clue, figure out the song. We've got, uh, I think, four, four of these to go. We'll see how quick you can go. On your marks, get set. Quiz number one, here. Select star from person where year of birth equals the year of get date. Maxim's guessing happy birthday, very famous song. Uh, I'll tell you that that's not the answer. I'm looking for, in this particular case, we're gonna be looking for a popular song. See, try to see uh, two, see, see, see as you guys are guessing. If you're struggling, I'll, I'll drop a couple hints. Let's see, Craig, I'll ask you to monitor these as we, we're going here. Oh, Juliana said born in the USA. That was a good guess, but I didn't use the location table. So how would you know it's the USA? We see baby, baby, we see we are the world. I'll give you a hint to get started. For those of you who are trying to page, if you were born this year, what would you be called? If you were born this year, what would you be called? That's hint number one. <laughs> Dima, yes, you would also be called born this year. Well played there. Oh, Ross got it. Ross, yes, Ross, gold star. Indeed. This song helped to create the cohort of people known as the Believers. The song is Baby by Justin Bieber. Well done, Ross. Gold star for you. My last au pair was obsessed with Justin Bieber. I had to listen to way too much Justin Bieber over the last year, so I had to give a little shout out and tribute there. All right, you got to just, you got to hang in the game. Question number two. Select star from measurement, where measurement concept ID is 4169163 and the value concept ID is 4587852. Craig's posting in the chat just in case anybody wants to grab that concept ID and drop it into Athena to get a clue. See how you're doing.
Wow. Kristen, Kristen, with no hints, uh, suggests they can't get no satisfaction. And Ross also nails it with get can't get no satisfaction. Indeed, the hint is that this is a scale in our vocabulary, life satisfaction index. And this hint here is none. Even though I try and I try and I try, indeed, the answer was the Rolling Stones. I can't get no satisfaction. Well done, Kristen. Gold star for you. And Evan, uh, and and I appreciate Karen's excitement to type so fast to get an answer that she misspelled two out of the four words, which is very impressive. I appreciate the eagerness. And Karen, this one's going to be for you. You can get the next one. Select star from observation, where observation concept ID is 37111655, and value as concept ID is uh, a value as concept is four five eight eight three five seven one. Chris Kristen guess sweet disposition by the temp temper trap. I've never heard of them. Ross guessed the same thing. I've never heard of them, so no. Although it sounds like it's a good guess. Melody nails it. Melody nails it. Happy. Pharrell. Indeed, it might seem crazy what I'm about to say, but this is not a valid condition concept. It's a, it's a status indicator of happiness. So you can clap along to know that we were talking about Pharrell Williams, happy. Gold stars for Melody. All right, I think we got two more. Starting now. Select star from condition occurrence, where condition concept ID equals 4116137, and stop reason is null. Stop reason is null. Kristen, Kristen nailing it with no hints. Oh, and Katie nailed it too, and Maxim. Indeed, this is the concept lacking belief in own ability. We've had many conversations in the forums about why it's hard to do double and triple negatives in data modeling. But indeed, uh, this band had to be part of our story, given that the band's name, let's see, uh, yeah, as Ann put, the band is Journey. And so we can't have joining the journey without Journey. So for those of you who join the next Odyssey karaoke event, you can imagine that we will be singing Journey, Don't Stop Believing. It looks like Karen might actually be singing it right now, but she's on mute. So next meeting, we may have to, to have her sing. All right, Kristen has gained a whole back, basket full of uh, gold stars here today. Very well done. The last one's going to be a tricky one. It'll be a nice one to end on. Here is your query. Select person ID from, select person ID from the condition, where condition and the concept ID is 4092254. Inner join on select person ID from measurement, where measurement concept ID equals 37020585, and value as concept ID is in 4309351, 36309288, 4309351, 4309351. Joining those person IDs together. I see Clark Evans there. He's 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 probably secretly thinking about how I'm such a crappy SQL programmer that I'd write this and he'd rather see it in some sort of Julia syntax instead. But it is what it is. I've come up with crazy puzzles for you written in SQL. Deal with it. The effort people are putting into this is inspiring. I mean, people are typing it. <laughs> Nasty. Well, we need, Helena's got to be, yep, yeah, we got, we need the actual title, though. We need the song and the singer, the, the title and the singer. We don't have a title. We don't have a title oh, or there a we singer. Go. Elena. Ah, Elena, my shot, yes, yes. And no, Karen, we cannot believe that you've never seen Hamilton that is unacceptable. 
we are an open, inclusive community, but everyone has to see Hamilton. Otherwise, so you've got like a six month notice now, and then you can come back. Since you're up in Brown, I think it's coming to the PPAC, coming pretty soon. So make sure you go check it out. Um, yes, indeed, this query, this is the concept for obsessional thoughts of throwing things away. These are the concepts for young, scrappy, and hungry. And just like my country, I am not throwing away my shot. By Hamilton Lin-Manuel Lin -Manuel Miranda singing this song. So with that, that is your session of Odyssey fun for today. I hope that you all had a good time taking an hour break out of your uh, out of your day to have a little bit of Odyssey theme fun. Uh, thank you all for joining, and I look forward to collaborating with you next week when we'll do something a little bit less uh, a, list, a little bit less silly than whatever I just put you through just now. Well, thank you, Patrick, for organizing that. Thank you for everybody for involving yourself. Uh, makes it more fun when everybody enjoys it and gets involved. So we will see you all next week. Have a great weekend, uh, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Bye, everybody.